Another day, another box for watching episode. We are at episode number 59. Man, 60 days in the NBA have already passed us by. Crazy. Crazy stuff. Well, you know what it is to hear. We debate every game. We recap every game. We tell our feelings here. Let me know your thoughts in the comments about today's games. What did you find most interesting? And yeah, like and subscribe. And let's get into it with the Celtics losing back-to-back -back games to Orlando at home. All right, so Orlando has now won six games in a row. They are on a six-game winning streak, now 11-20. and 20, And they have been playing some really great basketball since Marco Fultz and Cole Anthony came back. And it's been great to see because Marco Fultz seems like the glue guy during this winning streak. During this stretch, Marco Fultz is averaging 10 points, 5 assists, 4 boards, on a 46% shooting from the field, 50 from the three-point line. He doesn't shoot them a lot, of course. He's only had one bad game during this win streak streak and he's been really great and it's fun to see because he seems like the glue guy tonight he came up with those clutch offensive rebounds and he's been just such a positive all-around player for them so far and it's been fun to see Cole Anthony even though today I feel like his turnovers were really bad he's been the really much needed offensive guy of the bench tonight the role was filled by admiral Schofield with for 13 points on five of seven shooting paolo had 31 six and three with two steals what a great game from him in the card when he was six of seven from the three-point line and just a great win for the magic again who they could sneak into the play if they keep playing like this and for the celtics they were without jason tatum for personal reason reasons hopefully he it's nothing too major and he's back soon and as for their play their shooting has skimmed a little bit for these both teams tonight was a horrible shooting game the celtics shot just 35 percent from the field 25 percent from the three-point line and the magic shows just 38 percent but they made 12 threes just as the celtics but just on 29 tries which is a lot less than 47 right uh, easy math right there but boston defensively they have been better because you know return of robert williams and al horford which makes sense but their three-point you know hot shooting has kind of cooled off and it's really seen and that's about the biggest problem right they were just outplayed by the magic two times which is crazy to say but it just is the reality of these games they were outplayed then we had to indiana as the pacers lose to the knicks who are now on a seven game winning streak we would have thought and for this game the biggest you know uh difference in this game were the free throws because the knicks shot 30 free throws they made 23 of them the pacers shot 23 free throws they made just 15 of them and well that was the biggest difference in this game right the knicks now on a seven game winning streak have been the best defensive team in the league during this stretch which is pretty crazy right they have had the best defense 11 best offense second best net rating and they are the best rebounding team in this seven game winning streak and the seven game stretch and it's been great to see because well that's what top team Tiberal teams are known for and they have tapped back into it Jalen Brunson has been sensational 30 points two rebounds three assists two steals tonight and man he's just a great player shout out to Jalen Brunson Julius Randle had 25 and 14 tonight he was pretty solid himself RG Brad had 24 points he's been more efficient the three point shot is still not there but he's been more finishing much much better and looking uh, looking like a different player during this winning streak to be quite honest with you Emmanuel quickly the player that gets the most minutes off the bench is crazy because he's been playing some solid ball overall but he's playing 27 minutes a game during this win streak and he's averaging 9 3 and 3 on 34 percent from the field 26 percent from the three point line and 88 percent from the free throws which is pretty bad but he's been still good which is weird to say right but well all around players can have nights like this and be impactful right so great things from the knicks and it's a lot to be you know happy about in the new york right now and as for the pacers the biggest problem was the their two best young players didn't show up tyrese alberton 15 and 10 5 of 16 from the field benedict matter 15 points 4 of 16 from the field just a bad shooting night for both even though they weren't not you know they didn't not show up but they were just not as good as you would like them to be in this game for them to win shout out to aaron nismit who had a career night with 23 points 10 rebounds he was sensational all over the boards and just a huge energy guy tonight buddy hill 23 points 9 of 16 from the field great game from him they also had chris duarte back who played 14 minutes which was good to see and well a really rough loss against a hot team right now and the biggest talking point here is their offense late because it was bad it was some really bad shots late in this game miles turner shot the ball way too much he missed four free throws down the stretch which why is he shooting those shots those threes when he is even missing free throws i don't understand those decisions and tyrese shot a step back three which i mean i don't think that's a bad shot but 
I think could have gotten a better shot there. But hey, Taylor learning, Taylor a young team. And then we had to Detroit where the Nets win again and are now on a six game winning streak. <laughs> so with the Nets, they have been obviously better under Jacques. One, everyone knows they are really much better with him, like 13 and 7 now or 14 and 7 with one of the better defenses in the league. But during this win streak, they have not been playing some great defense, but they've been playing overall great basketball. Playing, you know, Kyrie and KD have been on a third during this stretch. Kyrie is averaging during this win streak. It started with that win against the Pacers in Indiana when Kyrie and KD didn't play and well nobody played really right and it was uh, Ken Thomas but let's let's talk about the win streak as for these two guys because Kyrie and KD have been sensational Kyrie has been averaging 32 points 6 rebounds 5 assists on 54% from the field 38% from the triple line and 96% from the free throw line just in crazy numbers but KD has even better numbers because he's averaging 33 points 6 rebounds 5 assists on 62% shooting from the field 46% from the 3 point line on 5 attempts a game and 97 from the free throw line he's barely missed a free throw during this, this win streak except tonight he missed one but and tonight KD had 43.6 rebounds to assist, 2 blocks, 1 steal, 6 turnovers though, but I mean, Kyrie on the other hand had 38, 6 and 3, 4 turnovers, but hey, those turnovers you live with it when your guys are scoring like that, right? And shout out to Edmond Sumner who was game high plus 16 and played some really positive ball in his hometown in Detroit, 5 points, 2 rebounds, 5 assists, and just a great win for the Nets who continue their win streak man the new york teams are hot and for the pistons this was once again about their young experience and their bench was uh, simply just horrible defensively and didn't do enough offensively to outdo Kyrie and KD in that third quarter where they got uh, 44 piece in that third quarter and KD was just unstoppable he hit that shot from you know the three point line where we all knew it was in and yeah it was just over by then it felt like Jaden Ivey had 7 of 11 19 points he was really good Jalen Duran with 8 11 2 3 steals and he's been really shining in the starting lineup just a couple of rough losses for these young Pistons but man it's it's good for them right they are playing good basketball actually they're getting much needed experience and their chances of Mbanyama are getting higher, which is exactly what you want to see as a Detroit fan, I would feel like. Then we had to Toronto as the Warriors pick up their third road win in this season and beat the Raptors. And it's funny because both these teams have been on a kind of similar path rise of right now. They've been both disappointing and kind of the bad vibes teams. But, well, Toronto has more bad vibes there. That's, there's just something wrong in Toronto and we'll see if they blow it up or not. But my Warriors played some really great defense which was fueled by a really good three-point shooting they were 18 of 39 from the three-point line which is 46 percent which when you shoot like this it fuels the defense it fuels the offense everything was just clicking tonight Draymond hit three threes in the first fucking quarter which is insane he was 17 9 and 5 on the game you got Jordan Poole with his best game of this season 43 points six assists and he was just free and he scored the basketball which is what he does best Clay didn't get in the way he had 17 7 and 4 and I was proud of him after that horrible performance in Philadelphia because you know he needs to show us more consistently that he can he can play like he was playing tonight just didn't force anything played within the offense defended well all you need clay the offense will come Kevin Looney man what a guy always Kevin Looney stand here 11 and 11 for him and just everyone played great which was fun to see and as for the Raptors well they are missing a lot right they're just bad defensively not enough effort they, which is weird because Nick Nurse is known as more of a defensive guy right but they have just not given any effort defensively they're letting guys blow by they're not uh, you know putting enough effort it feels like and of course they've been dealing with a lot of injuries overall during the season so far but it doesn't an excuse the effort defensively right so yeah i don't know what they'll do in toronto and it's gonna be interesting would they trade would they don't trade how they'll be skimming without og Anunobi, of course tonight again which is rough he's basically their whole defense without him they have like 127 defensive rating when he's not there which means they are you know 127 points per 100 possessions which is insane and Jordan Poole as a starter we all know has play, played different this year he started 12 games so far this year and he's averaging 27 points 2 rebounds 5 assists 47% from the field 35% from the 3 point line and 92% from the free throw line which is a whole lot different than when he's off the bench then we had to Minnesota 
Minnesota as Minnesota beats the Bulls. Now, the Bulls, another one of those bad vibes teams. I talked about them in the last video where I even, you know, clipped it for the ramble about them because they're just pure trash and they're need, they need to blow it up, man. They need to trade Demar, maybe Vucevic too, if, you know, what they can get for them. Give Patrick Williams more of a role for better or worse and just, you know, take their losses and hope for the best in the lottery because they have protected top 4 pick in Orlando, which if they are top 4, they get it, of course, and well, that would be nice for them, and maybe we would save them, but it's just depressing, man, they got 150 pieced by Minnesota, which is Minnesota's franchise record, and they were just dominating, everyone played some fun basketball, Nathan Knight of the bench with 16, Brain Force with 10, Austin Rivers with 14, you got D'Angelo Russell with 28 points, 8 assists on 10 of 14 shooting, you got Anthony Edwards with his best game, maybe of this season, 37, 7 and 11, Jaden McDaniels 15, 8 and 5. Everyone just ate today except for Kyle Anderson who essentially lost me my fantasy. So thank you Kyle Anderson. But hey, a great win for Minnesota. Then we had to Denver where the Nuggets hold on and beat the Hornets behind Nikola Zucevic. One hell of a performance. And it's a lot of the same for these Nuggets. Their defense is not great. Their bench has been a lot of up and downs and mostly down lately. Their starting lineup is great. Nikola Jokic is playing at insanely high level he had 40 points 27 rebounds 10 assists and was plus 20 on the game 13 of 26 from the field he made those free, free throws down the stretch to ice the game and yeah just a great performance from the starters but the bench needs to do better and they need to defend better but who knows if they will because it's the same old story with them but let's focus on the positive because Nikola Jokic is sensational and had one of the better games we've ever seen. Yeah, and as for the Hornets, they still can defend. Lamelo had 31, 5 and 5, 10 of 21 from the field. It's more fun with him to watch them, you know, because Lamelo is fun, a fun player. Kelly Oubre of the bench has not been that great since, you know, Gordon Hayward returned. But Gordon Hayward played pretty great tonight. But Kelly Oubre has not been himself, so it kind of, you know, negates that, right? Shout out Mason Plumlee, also 11, 9, and 4 on this game, two blocks, and I like Mason Plumlee a lot, actually. He, he's a great role player, man. And Jalen McDaniels of the bench at 14, so some cool performances, something, but the Hornets are just bad. <laughs> and to finish off our road of bad vibes teams in the East losing, we finish with the Wizards losing their 10th straight game against the Lakers tonight. <clears throat> and to specify, they of course didn't lose 10 straight to the Lakers, but they lost 10 straight overall. And of course they were without Bradley Beal for a bunch of these games, but Bradley Beal was back tonight and he was pretty good. 29 points, 9 of 17 from the field, 11 of 13 from the free throw line. You've got Kyle Kuzma who's been balling out 22 and 16. Kristaps Porzingis gets his 20, but he's not been as efficient lately. And the starters played really good tonight. The bench let them down a little bit, except for Daniel Gafford, who when he plays those 20 minutes really well, man, he looks like one hell of a player. 12 and 5, with two blocks and one steal in 20 minutes, 6 of 6 from the field, and a great energy from him. He was single-handedly the reason they were, you know, winning in that fourth quarter, which is crazy to say. But during this losing streak, Washington has been 5th worst defense, 7th worst offense, third worst in net, net rating overall and just they look poor man they look really poor and they're one of, another one of those teams in the east who probably should blow it up but they never do same as the bulls we'll see what they do this year maybe you know with them Banyama, they'll try to blow it up quicker because they still you know got actually a pretty good chance they have the same record as the magic for god's sake right so yeah we will see about the wizards what they will do but it's not looking great and it's another bad vibe east team which is funny we've talked about four bad vibes east team in a row and for the lakers they are a month without ad which i didn't even mention which is crazy well uh, at least a month the timeline is indefinite but a month it will be at least shout out lebron man Still incredible performances. He was sensational tonight with 33 points, 7 rebounds, 9 assists, 1 block, and just played great basketball overall. Get that dunk to, you know, put them up to, then the assist to put them up to again late in this ball game, and was just making plays all over the game. And it was fun to see the whole starting lineup play really well. Shout out Austin Reeves, man. He's one hell of a player and I really enjoy him. And it was another dogfight for the Lakers, which is usually is. But they win it out tonight at home. And, but it's still probably still a sour taste in Lakers fans' mouth. Because, well, AD is out for who knows if just a month. And yeah, without AD, you don't know 
probably stand that much of a chance, right? And that about does it. That about does it, man. Some really intriguing games, man. Shout out Orlando for a look again, man, because they're so fun, these last, this win streak, and hopefully they, you know, consistently show us more of that. Of course, they're not going to win every game, but if they play like this consistently, they're like I said, could make the play in. And as for tonight, the Monday, we got Cavs against the Jazz, which is Donovan Mitchell against Utah, which is fun, even though it's in Cleveland. It's not, you know, in Utah, but still a fun game. And both pretty good teams. Raptors against the Sixers on a back to back. Raptors need a win. Philadelphia has been rolling at home. So who knows how they do there? Magic at Atlanta. Atlanta needs a win also. The Magic on a winning streak. Another fun matchup. Uh, Spurs Rockets, probably not the funnest matchup. I expect the Rockets to win, which means the Spurs will win. And T Wolves Mavericks could be a good one, but, but it's a back to back for the T Wolves, and I'm not sure if Rudy Gobert is playing. Pelicans Bucks, that's a great one. That's a great one. The Pelicans have lost three straight, they need to win. We're not sure if Giannis is playing, but I'm pretty sure he will since it's against a bigger team, and that should be a good one. Thunder against the Blazers could be also fun, and Suns against Lakers. Well, that, that should bring some energy, even though it's a back to back again for the Lakers and without AD of course so who knows if LeBron will play on a back to back in Phoenix and yeah that might be a snoozer actually who knows how that will turn out and the Kings play which they are always fun even though it's against the lowly Hornets yeah that, that's that's it for tonight man uh, have a wonderful day leave a like leave a comment what are your thoughts about you know these things and subscribe and I'll catch you all tomorrow with another box score watching episode.